Hey guys, Chill here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D. Today's topic is Com Pointer. It's a smart pointer. It's going to make our resource management hell of a lot sexier. So if we look at our code right now, uh, what we're doing is we're doing basically manual resource management of our Com Pointer interfaces here. So when we're done with them, we got to call release on them. The allocation stuff is all handled by these creation functions, right? Uh, you just pass it a pointer to a pointer, it fills that. But you have to call release when you're done with that interface so that com knows when it's time to clean up. And that can be a problem, first of all. So it's a little annoying. But more than that, uh, take a look at this. We're creating this interface here. And then we call get buffer. We fill that pointer with an interface. It's got a reference to it now. Now we call create render target view. But what if this throws an exception? That means that this pointer, the interface that it was holding, it didn't get release called on it, and now you're dangling your resource there. That's the tricky thing. It's tricky to use um, exceptions like this if you're not using modern C++, if you're not using RAII. But if you can leverage RAII, then it's absolutely no problem. So what we want is we want to wrap these pointers in an object that will release the interface automatically when that object goes out of scope. And that's going to solve a bunch of our problems, it's going to make our code sexier, and it's going to make the ladies, well, let me just tell you, it's going to be like an Axe commercial up in here. So what do we got to do? We'll add a commit here, WRL com pointer for the win. And uh, let's take a look at uh, what, what, what looks different here. Well, the first thing you're going to notice here when we get into our code is we no longer need our destructor because that's all going to be managed automatically. Um, now the other code, like look here, when we're passing in our pointer to pointer to get it filled for object creation for the acquisition of our interfaces, nothing changes here. It's all exactly the same. And when we're calling stuff, let me just give you an example. When we're using one of these pointers to call something, it's exactly the same syntax. Nothing changes. Different, but the same, but still different. Now, what does change is uh, the way we declare our pointers now. We don't declare it as a dumb pointer with a star. We declare it as a com pointer templated on our interface type. And then com pointer, it overloads this uh, operator here, so you can just use it directly. But if you want to get the actual underlying pointer, the address, you've got to call dot get. So that's a little different between here and here. You don't pass it in directly because directly it's just, it's a smart pointer object. You got to call get to get that underlying address. Neat little side effect here is that um, you don't need this reinterpret cast anymore when using com pointer for whatever reason. I guess that's to do with the way the operator is overloaded and it returns a value. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. The, the moral of the story is your code gets cleaner, a lot of stuff gets uh, pulled out. And it's not that complicated. It's not that difficult to uh, change it up to use com pointer. In the header file, graphics.h, we include WRL because that is where com pointer lives. And then down here, well, we can make the destructor just default now, which is nice. Rule of zero or whatever, we're, whatever rule we're on here. And down here, instead of declaring our pointers as just dumb pointers, we declare them has com pointer and I don't like to use uh, I don't like to import namespaces in a header file so I use the full namespace here but in graphics.cpp I use namespace wr I create an alias here and now for example because we're creating this as a smart pointer uh, after it gets filled even if this throws when it goes out of scope this pointer will be guaranteed to be released now one thing you might be wondering is, well, you know, com pointer looks okay, but couldn't you just use unique pointer from the standard library? And uh, the answer is, well, yes, but it would be a bit of a pain in the dick. Uh, first of all, unique pointer by default frees its resources by calling the delete operator on the underlying pointer, right? Uh, but that's not going to work for com objects, right? You want to call release on the interface. Uh, so, I mean, in, with unique pointer, you could give it a custom deleter to call release, but com pointer already does that out of the box. The second reason why you want to use com pointer, and this is actually quite important, uh, generally, when you acquire interfaces, you do that by uh, passing in a pointer to a pointer. You got the PP, right? Direct3D is full of PP, and you've got to give the function a pointer 
to the pointer, and then it will fill that pointer with the pointer to the interface. So you got to give it the PP. Now the thing is, uh, with a unique pointer, that pointer is uh, encapsulated. So you can't get the address of the encapsulated pointer with unique pointer. So that makes your job a lot more difficult. If you wanted to use a unique pointer here, you'd have to create a dumb pointer, fill the dumb pointer, and then move that dumb pointer into your unique pointer. That's dirty. This is nice and clean. Now the third reason is that unique pointer is meant to uniquely own a resource. But COM objects, COM interfaces, they have reference counts. They can be owned by multiple pointers. So unique pointer would not be able to take advantage of that. But COM pointer, if you do a copy with a COM pointer, it will call add ref and it will increase the reference count on that COM object. And besides that, COM pointer has some uh, useful functions that I'll show you in a second. But there's one super important thing that we have to go over, and that is this address of operator. Now, if you think about it, this address of operator here, this might seem a little weird, because it looks like we're taking the address of the smart pointer object, not the address of the underlying, you know, i, I device pointer or whatever. Uh, so we're getting an address to a smart pointer pointer object, but this function here is expecting an address of a dumb pointer. But the thing about com pointer is it overloads the address of operator. So it overloads it to return the address of the encapsulated pointer. And that's great. That's one of its main advantages over unique pointer uh, in this situation. But it also does something that you will probably not be aware of unless I tell you. And that is, if this smart pointer is currently owning a com object, it will first call release on that before it returns the address of the underlying pointer. And that kind of makes sense. It's useful if you think about it, because if I'm going to fill this pointer, I want to release anything that it is owning so that I don't leak memory resources. So it's a very nice and very convenient syntax. Only, and here's the thing, sometimes you want to get the address of the pointer, you want to get the PP, but you don't want to fill the pointer. You just want to get the PP. So just as a quick example, some Direct3D functions, they take an array of interface pointers. Uh, for example, uh, so one function takes an array of render targets that you can bind to the pipeline. And in that case, you've got a, an array of pointers that's handled by a pointer to a pointer, right? Just like an array of ints is handled by a pointer to an int, an array of pointers is handled by a pointer to a pointer. All right. Now, a lot of times, although the function can take an array of pointers, you really don't want to pass it one. In that case, if you already have a pointer, all you do is you get the address of that pointer, and that gives you a pointer to a pointer, and that looks like an array of pointers. The size of the array is one. So a lot of times you're taking the address of the pointer, but not to fill it, just to get something that looks like an array of pointers. But if you use this address of operator to do that, you're gonna free that interface, and then when you pass it in, the bad shit's gonna happen. So what you wanna do, and this has obviously been uh, accounted for, you would call, for example, p back buffer dot get address of, and that will get you the address but it will not release the pointer. If you look here, you've also got release and get address of, and that's exactly the same as if you just use the overloaded operator. So you gotta be careful with this operator here. You gotta understand what it does. It releases and gets the address of the underlying pointer, gets the PP. And that's basically it. That's all we're gonna be using. The only things we use from the smart pointer mainly are this overloaded uh, member access, overloaded address of, the get, and the get address of. Those four things are what constitute most of our work with this bad boy. You can call as, and this basically does a uh, query interface. So you would pass it a pointer to another com pointer with a different interface type, and it would do query interface and then fill that com pointer with its desired interface type, if it is supported. So that's interesting, but we don't actually use query interface directly that often in Direct3D, so it's probably not something we're going to be seeing much of. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the COM pointer supports 
move semantics. So if you move from one to another, it's not going to call add ref or release. It'll just move that bad boy. But there you have it. And I also, um, I use com pointer here in the DXGI info manager. And that enabled me to default its destructor as well. So there you go, there's com pointer. And I think we're basically done the infrastructure for our graphics object. So in the next video, we can finally get started on using the pipeline to render triangles. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more hardware 3D.